If you get married, we will not be happy. If you get married, who is going to train our children? Then you are going to concentrate your money, your efforts, your love, and everything upon your wife and upon your children. And they say, no way. But God has made the way. I say, God has made the way. You know, sometimes that's why your enemies are not happy. They say, all the things are given to them. And I'm surprised for a mother that has an only daughter. And this daughter is saying, Mama, something is happening. What's that? Mama, I want to get married. Ah, get married. How about me? When you get married now, all you know is your husband. And then me here, you're going to neglect me. I'm going to be miserable. Mama, not like that. If I get married, my, myself and my husband will take care of you. No way. No way. You're mine. You are my daughter. I don't want you to get married. I just love you for you to be miserable. That yoke is broken this day in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know all these people that you know, they, all they want to do is that they just want to use you. That's what makes them happy. And your happiness, that's not their concern. Just labor, just work, and just do this and this, and just make us happy and contribute to our lives. And don't worry. Don't care. Don't pray. Don't get concerned for you getting settled in life. That yoke is broken in Jesus' name. And so Pharaoh was not happy, but I pity Pharaoh. Happy or not, God is going to do it. I pity Pharaoh. And if he tries to stand in the, in the way of these people of God, the Red Sea will be his final end. And that is what happens. You will get to the land of Canaan. You will get to the land of promise. But the one who is not happy, for you making the progress, the one who is not happy, for you getting to that land of pleasure, that land of promise, he is the one that will finish at the Red Sea. I will not finish at the Red Sea. I said I will not finish at the Red Sea. If something good is happening to your brother, you better rejoice with him. If something good is happening to your sister, you better rejoice with her. Because whether you like it or not, she is going to get to the land of Canaan. Whether you like it or not, he's going to get to the land of promise. And I pray that you follow through, all of us together, will get to that land of promise in Jesus' name. The Lord has said, I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretch out arm and with great judgment verse 7 and i will take you to me for a people and i will be to you a god and ye shall know that i am the lord your god which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the egyptians it's repeated again because it is sure it is certain you are coming out and I will bring you in unto the land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. It will happen. This day a breakthrough has come for you. Bondage is turned around. Bondage is turned upside down. And your bondage is destroyed in Jesus' name. In Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 23. Ezekiel 34. Freedom. It has come. Breakthrough. It has come. The goodness of the Lord, it has come. It will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Your enemies will be put to shame. The strangers will get away from your life. 
Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. And he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken it. That means I have said it is done. The Lord said, He has spoken it for your good, and it is done. He has spoken your release, and it is done. He has granted your breakthrough, and it is done. And then it says in verse 25, And I will make them a covenant make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease to stop out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods and i will make them and the places round about my hill what a blessing and i will cause the shower to come down in his season. The next line is wonderful. The next line is, this is for me. I said, this is for me. I said, this is for me. Read it out, if it's for you. Read it again. Read it again. A new season has come. Rainy season has come. Showers are coming. The past is gone. The past is buried. From today, your rainy season has now come. Your breakthrough has now come. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be, there shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield a fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. I told you already, the people that just want to make use of your service, they don't want your happiness, only serve us. They don't want your joy, only serve us. They don't want your progress, only serve us. It says, I have delivered you already out of the hand of those that served themselves of you. You are delivered in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, this is giving us total freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from satanic affliction. Satanic bondage. Freedom from suffering. And freedom from strangers. Those strangers will not have authority over your life anymore in Jesus' name. It wasn't there when you were born, a stranger. It wasn't there when you were born again as a stranger. It wasn't there when God made a covenant with you and gave you all these promises as a stranger. I don't they just come out of nowhere. I don't want to tie the chain around you and knock off their hand from your life. Freedom from strangers. You are free. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? A servant ye are to whom ye obey. That's what happened to the children of Israel. Moses came and Moses declared unto them, Ye are coming out of the Egyptian bondage. And then, when Pharaoh had that, he told the taskmasters, he said, you know what? The surprise of my life. Somebody came in this morning. He called his name Moses. 
He said, he's representing the people. And he said, let my people go. Taskmasters, what do you see? Oh, they said, those people, that's an idle dream. Those people, that's an impossible project. How can it be? What are we going to do? Go back and increase their bond. Go back and increase their torment. And they went back and increased their torment. And the children of Israel said, Moses, leave us alone. Leave us in the hand of this man. See, since you came now and you gave him the project, the proposal, things are getting tougher. Let's serve him. We accept the bondage. We're going to serve the king of Egypt. Moses said, no. This day of his power, the power for your hour. I said, no, in Jesus' name. You see, after the message, they appeared to me. And they said, ah, your pastor is giving you so false confidence. And your pastor is saying, he is praying, and you are coming out, you will see. And then you are saying, okay, don't, don't worry, leave me alone, I will serve you. But don't increase my bondage, and I say, no. And I say, no. And you say, no. And we together, we say no. Because if two of us shall agree as touch, agree with me. Let me agree with you. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on earth, it shall be done for us of our Father who is in heaven in Jesus' name. The, the Israelites said, Moses, leave us alone. Let us serve the king of, East, of, of Egypt. And Moses said, no. And I say, in this power, they are power for your hour. I say, no, in Jesus' name. Because to whom ye yield yourselves to obey. A servant's here. To whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death of obedience unto righteousness but god be thanked that she was servants of sin but she obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered unto you and being then made free from sin thank god you are free i say thank god you are free be made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness isaiah chapter 52 you have something to do now very simple it's a simple thing you're supposed to do but you'll do it isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 awake don't sleep again awake put on your strength of zion the strength put on that beautiful garment of jerusalem the holy city you're holy from this day i said you're holy from this day your guilt is gone. Your condemnation is gone. And all the weakness, just falling to sin. I have no choice. I have no choice. I cannot do anything right. All that is changing. For henceforth, there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and to the unclean. Your life is a territory they cannot trample upon anymore in Jesus' name. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the binds of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I am free. I am free. You are free in Jesus' name. You shake yourself from that dust and you forget about it and move on. In verse 3, for thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for naught. You have served the strangers for nothing. You sold yourself because of fear unto Pharaoh, unto Nebuchadnezzar for nothing. Ye shall be redeemed without money. You be redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now dynamic faith for breakthrough. I have a breakthrough. Say it aloud.
Say it with confidence. You have a breakthrough, Jesus' name. Dynamic faith for breakthrough. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many darts? All the furry darts of the wicked. They're quenched. They're destroyed in Jesus' name. I'm looking at victors. I'm looking at overcomers. I see the conquerors. And I see those champions. God bless you. You have overcome already. In Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. As it is written. Your victory is written already. Your dominion is reaching already. Your progress is reaching already. And what is reaching is going to be fulfilled. As it is reaching, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who calleth those things would be not as though they were. He's the one that quickness the dead. And there's the one that calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. Anybody having faith? That it, that's all you need. Not being weak in faith. Not being weak in faith, I am not weak in faith. But he was he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was, he was, he was, he was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded there are some you, you know the problem when somebody is partially uh, persuaded are you going to do this my brother i'm thinking about it i'm hoping i will do it are you not persuaded well partially i'm partially persuaded this is your sickness standing for a long time and you spend all your income on hospitals. Are you going to be held? Are you going to be healed? I'm thinking so. I'm hoping so. I feel maybe. Are you not persuaded? Well, I'm partially persuaded. That's the problem. Are you partially persuaded? How persuaded are you? I said how persuaded are you? These Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you? This sickness reaching in your life, reaching in your family. This sickness is going in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you? Fully persuaded. All these strangers. Every time you want to get up and move on, they show up. They have not visited you for how many years now? And just like you are planning, and then you are going for the interview. As you are going for the interview, here comes the man. You've not seen him for the past five years. How, how did he know I'm going for interview today? They have come again and just knocked at the door and said, how are you? I just came to see you to know whether you're still living and face me i face you or whether you have moved to another place so you are still here okay you'll be here another time i'm going to call maybe 10 years again i'll meet you here again you say look at this every time i'm taking a forward step they always come you will not see them again i said you will not see them again they are gone away from your life in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you?